one of my major hobbies in the Pearl is uh, what I spend most of my kind of personal time on is curation, sorting out stuff on the CPAD and trying to do things to get other people to do it as well. So I've done run various things which have been to different amounts of successful. Um, last year I took part in the 24 pull requests challenge for 24 pull requests in December, um, which seemed like an awful lot of work. And that prompted the idea of the pull request challenge of send everyone one distribution a month, pick randomly, and you've got a month to do a pull request. Um, and I figured that there's loads of stuff on CPAN, every distribution has something that could be usually done for it. Um, and it will make it easier. We're doing 24 pull requests, you have to go and find the, the repo to do the PR one. I, I found that one of the hardest bits. Um, and just one PR a month sounded like that was quite plausible. Given my past experience with running various channels, I expected about 12 people to sign up. And I would just pick the distribution by hand by looking at kind of widely used distributions that had lots of votes and give them out and we just kind of we'll work it out and evolve it through the year. Um, it didn't quite work out that way. I announced it in November and had about 18 sign-ups, which is what I expected. On Christmas Eve, I reposted it on Blogs Pearl, got about 50 sign-ups. And then I was at my in-laws um, and my mailbox just went crazy on New Year's Eve. And then someone mailed me saying, you do know you're number one on Packing News. Um, and so by midnight, I had 350 signups. So um, 350 sign -ups, people who wanted a distribution the next morning. So I stayed until about 3 a.m. on New Year's Eve, quickly writing some scripts <coughs> with random distributions and give them out. Um, and so the way it works is if you've signed up, um, all distributions are scored for their suitability for giving out. Um, I pick them randomly, give them out, you get an email on the first of the month, you've got a month to do um, uh, a PR. And if you do a PR, then you get one the following month. The email that gives you your assignment has some pointers about whether it's got uh, CPAN testers outstanding, uh, various other things you, you might want to look at uh, fixing. And when everyone joins the challenge, they get an email with a bunch of pointers uh, of uh, things you might do to help with distribution. <coughs> so, most of this talk is some analysis on, so how did it go, what did people do, why did they do it, why didn't they do stuff, etc. So firstly, um, there's about 31,000 distributions on CPAN, and at the start of the year, 9,100 or so of those had a GitHub repo, now it's 10,500. Some of that has been prompted by this challenge, people adding repos to get people to fix their books for them. Um, and there's 300 that have got a repo in the metadata, but the repo doesn't exist anymore. So, as I said, 350 people signed up midnight of uh, New Year's Eve. 493 people have signed up so far. I'm hoping there'll be like another seven, so it'll be 500 for the year. Um, so, if, uh, how many people here are taking part in the challenge? So, there's at least seven people in this room. <laughs> um, so, why did so many people sign up to it? Um, uh, so, I think one of the big reasons was a very low barrier to entry. You just say, email me your GitHub username and you will. Um, uh, also, on the post, I explicitly said you don't have to be an expert in Perl or CPAN or Git, we'll help you. Um, and one PR a month yeah, doesn't sound too bad. Um, lots of people with New Year's resolution, the New Year's Eve effect, I guess, and also the hacking news effect. Those people just seem like, yeah, that sounds like fun, I'll, I'll sign up, why not? To help you doing this talk, I sent out two surveys. Um, survey members, <coughs> one to everyone who took part, and one to every author who had at least one of their distributions assigned. Um, that doesn't mean they knew about the challenge, because quite a lot of uh, distributions got assigned, person never contacted the author, perhaps never did a PR, or perhaps did a PR and didn't mention the challenge. So there are a few authors who said, ah, I didn't know I got that PR because of the challenge, but I got a good, got a good PR, thank you. So the first question that I asked people was, why did they sign up? And these were, they could take as many of these as they like, so they were <coughs> exclusive. Um, so you can kind of zip down through that. But three of the top four were these, which to me, the message is, there are a bunch of people out there who want to get involved. I've had a lot of email with people 
a lot of people who use Perl in their job in the past aren't now, but who had a real fondness and, and wanted to have some way to get involved. And this was like a nice um, gateway drug. Um, so one of the things that a lot of people said was that they wanted to get more experience doing pull requests. Um, what so many people signed up, and there was loads of people mainly me saying, I've never programmed in Perl before, haven't they used GitHub, this sounds good, I like, which one is that? So I mailed Sawyer and said, could you write a tutorial on how to do a pull request? Which he did very early in January. I had a lot of comments from people saying thank you for that, and that that was part of what made it good for them. Um, a lot of people said that they signed up to learn about CPAN toolchain, that by getting these different distributions and looking and seeing how they were built and released, um, that it would help them. Um, all of our tools have lots of documentation, but they don't have lots of documentation that's aimed at new authors and inexperienced authors, on, and particularly people who get to shoot and go, what are all these files in here, what am I supposed to do? And so we've had some frustration on both sides, with people not understanding how the tool chain works, what you're supposed to put in the repo and what you're not. So people generating <coughs> and then authors kind of go, why have you done this? Um, so depending on uh, what I hear in Dave's talk later about, you should write an ebook. This is kind of like, I've always wanted to write a book and thought, maybe, maybe this is the one, but maybe his talk will put me off. <laughs> so, not, in that, not, in that way, not in that way. Um, uh, but if someone else wants to write the book, then I think that would be fab. Um, lots of people said that they did this to learn more about what's on CPAN, and they kind of listed this as one of the side effects, that they, wow, there's all these kind of bizarre modules and namespaces out there. Uh, which made me think, we should do more uh, to make people just aware of what's out there. So, I'm starting a, kind of a weekly mail list where, if you sign up, you'll just get one email a week telling you about a module. Very concise just to kind of plant it in your mind, so that next time you come across some problem, you think, I, I, I saw some module for doing that, rather than thinking, I could write a module for that, put it on CPAP, uh, which is what usually happens. Uh, if anyone wants to help with writing those synopses, uh, I'd be very happy to get them. I'm basically going to rip stuff off from the Perl Advent calendars and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, this is the spread of people signing up, I asked them how long have they been doing Perl. You can see, uh, those two funny spikes, which were basically around oh, at least 10 years, or at least 15 years. And so I just put those in 15 and 10. If you chug them, this is not what I was expecting to see. I was expecting there'd be a lot more, this would be skewed towards kind of the older people. Um, I think we've been doing Perl a long time, but actually the biggest group is people doing Perl less than five years, if you chug by five years. Um, make it that um, how many people have done the pull request before? Roughly two thirds of people had. Um, and this shows you distribution, how many dis people have got a distribution by month is the, the total size of the column. And how many people actually did a pull request in the green part in each column. So you can see Jan January, there was the, this huge surge of people um, which quickly dropped off, which is kind of what I was expecting, what most people were expecting. Um, uh, and then it sort of plateaued around about here, and you see the, the number of pull requests getting done is kind of roughly equal. And then late last month, I had a look at, made a list of everyone who'd done at least one pull request, but then, then dropped out of the challenge. Um, and Mel Moore said, Why don't you join back in just for December uh, and just do one more distribution so we can end up with a bank, which is why we've kind of got this big spike at the end, and which is why there's actually a drop in the number of people around in November. So people said, yeah, okay, yeah, throw that one away, give me a, give me a fresh one for December. This shows you the number of pull requests um, per month done on CPAN distributions that have their repo in their metadata um, since uh, January uh, 2013. So you can see that the January effect was the biggest number of PRs ever done, and five or six months uh, are better than any other months we've had in the past. So then I thought, well, let's chunk it um, by year. And I'm, I'm kind of guessing that perhaps this is when everyone suddenly started thinking, maybe I should have a GitHub repo for my thing and this thing in the metadata. That's why there was that big jump. Um, so it's not such a big jump, but it is a pretty good jump. Um, 
And so I said 493 people have signed up, and 233 of those people have done at least one PR this year. Those people have signed up and never done a PR. Um, lots of the lots of the hacker news crowd to recall them. Um, and so this is the success rate for an individual. So this is how many people have done 12 pull requests for each month. So 12 out of 12. And at the moment, all of these eight could become here. So there are 15 people who could have kind of a clean sweep for the year. Um, and you can see that there are people until January, February, March, um, a good chunk of it's all dropped off. Through the year, some people, they just want on one month, they won't do a full request, but they will the next month, or they might skip a couple of months. If you get a distribution that you don't like, um, you can just say, oh, I'll skip this month. You can ask me for a different distribution as well. Um, and some people get busy, they forget, etc. And so we've had 725 assignments given out that resulted in at least one pull request. And 663 different CMAN distributions have had at least one pull request. Um, which, given that I was expecting about 12 people to join up, and most of them kind of give up around about March, is a lot better than I was expecting. Um, 337 people have dropped out. That's 68%. So you can see the figures. So a bunch of people dropped out who did do at least one pull request, but then they dropped out. Quite a few of them kind of bound the second already, so I'd like them guilty of kind of apologizing. So I don't care if I can. Um, um, so 242 of those didn't do a PR. Um, so in this uh, questionnaire I sent down, I asked people, so why did you quit? Um, and so this is a list, and in the next few slides, I'm going to go through bit of analysis on what does that mean. So by far the biggest one, three quarters, they didn't have enough time. And I can also kind of interpret that as the assignment didn't engage them. They got the email, they didn't go, oh, fantastic, I know I got um, to answer to. Um, they quite often when people got a module like that, they tended to have a bit of a smaller, oh my god, I've got to answer to, can I have a different one? Uh, a bit daunted by those. A number of people actually thought they were not only going to get a distribution, that they were going to be given a task. This is the distribution, and we want you to do this. We want you to fix this bug, or implement this feature, or there's some CPAN testers fails. And they do get told about certain issues, but there's quite often there's a list of things that they could, they could do. And people wanted, a number of people anyway, wanted to be told exactly what to do. The thing is, there's lots of bugs on CPAN, but the easy ones tend to have been fixed already. The ones that are there tend to be the more tricky books. Uh, roughly 25% said that they weren't interested in the module that they got. Um, and so there's various things we could do. So some people all said, well, how about you can mail like three modules to each person, to everyone each month, and they can pick one of those, or provide a web interface for selecting modules. The distribution, the adoption project that I ran, has that kind of interface where it's a big list of Modules that need some love and attention, why don't you pick one? And actually, I think that if we'd had that kind of interface, we probably wouldn't have had as many pull requests done as many someone say, right, this is your module, do something. So yes, it meant that certain people didn't, but it meant that other people were like, oh, okay, right, well, I'll do something. So, who knows? The other reality is uh, CPAP is a bit of a mixed bag, and if I pick something at random, you, you're going to get something that may or may not be <coughs> Um, Fifteen percent of people gave the, their reason for dropping out that they had no response from the author. Either they made them, or they submitted a pull request, got no response. Like, well, I'm not going to bother next month. Or they perhaps had a couple of months like that, and that just was very discouraging. Um, because this was all a bit of a mad panic at the start of the year, didn't really have a chance to engage with the authors. Um, but several people suggested this, and this is obviously the way going forward is to get authors to opt in, um, rather than just randomly assigning um, distributions. Around about March and April, I started emailing the authors and saying, ah, it's a good chance one of your distributions is going to be assigned. You can tell me that you don't want any of your modules. You can pick certain modules and give them a plus one if you want specific ones to be assigned. And actually, that got a really positive response from almost all authors. I also said you could just blacklist yourself and nothing of yours now or future will ever get assigned. And a small number of authors did that. Um, 
So uh, for next year's challenge, uh, I'll be doing the opt-in model, assuming that results in enough distributions to actually hand out. Um, a number of people said this, that open issues were too hard. Um, so um, the kind of thoughts about, well, in a perfect world, we've had all these distributions tagged with subjects and whether they had excess or not, or, um, and also tagged for, is this a hard or an easy or um, a um, very complicated module, and also tagging the, uh, the books with that as well, and then let people identify themselves as beginner or intermediate or expert, and so we kind of try and match things up a bit better. It's obviously a bootstrapping problem in there, and that someone needs to tag all these things. A mailing all the CPAN authors and say, would you mind tagging all your modules for me to make my life easier for my challenge? Not really going to fly. I've already mentioned this one. There are some heavyweight discs that were getting assigned, and there were some people, some authors who thought that we should give those out more. My experience was people who got those tended to be quite daunted. Um, and I think that they would really have to be matched up with an expert or someone who really wanted those modules. I think they're better suited for hackathons or kind of team challenges. We had three hackathons kind of associated with this challenge this year, and that worked quite well where teams would get together and try and work on specific bugs to fix. Um, if you're not familiar with kind of quality and CPANs, um, fixing various um, meta issues around the distribution to make it a, a more a, a better behaved distribution on CPAN. Um, some authors were very happy about getting PRs to address this, some were really, really happy about getting um, this. Um, so I think here is somewhere where I might try and contact the authors and say, can you let me know if there are specific ones that you don't agree with? Um, and so then we won't try and encourage people to do those. Um, I think what we really need is kind of a subset of CPANs and some other issues as a CPAN best practices that everyone says, okay, these are all good things, it's hard to argue with some of those points. Whereas there are some bits of CPAN here. Um, you can see where the authors are coming from. Ask people, are they uh, likely to, are they more likely to contribute to CPAN distributions as a result of this challenge? And this was really satisfying for me, that, so that nearly three quarters of people said yes, that as a result of doing this now I'm more likely to just contribute to other modules and fix bugs, etc. Which was kind of the whole point of this challenge, getting <coughs> people more involved. I uh, ask questions at the end. It's a weird sushi. Um, so, um, just go on and on. And, um, so, this is a random quote of what people said to me. Um, uh, and so, I'll just let you read them, and I'm just going to have a page to read them. So, uh, to stop, we'll go back if you miss one. So, um, the great bit about this was someone saying that they now felt inspired to kind of get involved in other things. I got a lot of comments like this one, which is what prompted me to think, oh, we should try this mailing list idea. This one, I couldn't have written a better one myself. It's like, great, this is written for me to put on a slide. There were quite a few people who said, they used to use Perl and they had a real fondness for Perl, but it wasn't their job. And that this was a way to kind of, for them to get, get back into the community and actually they were really enjoying it and that for them was kind of a, a real sense of, kind of pleasure of getting back in with friends and the community. A lot of people gave uh, very good comments about the community. We had a mailing list and an RC channel specifically for this, but I saw stuff getting discussed on various other channels as well. So there's a lot of uh, very experienced authors helping out um, less experienced authors with uh, putting together a PR for a third person's distribution. Um, I really like this comment, the, the, the heartbeat against procrastination. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of fun, excellent. Um, so I asked them, uh, would you be likely to, would you like to take part in the challenge again? So more than three quarters of the people who replied to the questionnaire said yes. So I guess I'm doing the challenge again next year. Um, I also sent a questionnaire to the authors, so I asked them about what did you think about the, the pull request that you got. Um, uh, you can see there, so near the bottom, so PR wasn't brilliant, there's 32. It says 26%, so PR was terrible, only two. But remember, 663 distributions, differences of distributions had a PR. 
So this is 32 out of those um, weren't brilliant. And given that there's a whole lot of people who weren't experienced with CPAN and would do pull requests, um, it's kind of to be expected. And the one thing that would have been better is getting the, the authors <coughs> primed and ready for these kind of things coming. Once I started sending those emails, explaining this is how the channel works, loads of people <coughs> really the understanding. I think that really did improve um, the, the interactions that uh, participants were getting with the authors. I asked the authors, would you be happy for your discs to be handed out next year? So, so all of them, or some of them, so there are some authors who said, I've got certain discs that aren't really suitable for this, but certain other ones, yes. So at least three quarters of authors have said yes. So which makes you think, okay, if I do do an opt-in system for next year's challenge, hopefully I'll get enough distribution to be able to hand out. I'm going to try and avoid the hacking news effect this year so that there'll be a small bunch of people at the start of the year um, and, and kind of perhaps a better sustained quality through the year. And a theme from all the authors coming back to me was better communication from me to them um, would, have, you know, would have made their life easier and felt like they could engage with the challenge and be more supportive because a lot of them hadn't heard back and didn't know what it was and just had a PR saying, this is part of the PRC, thanks. What, what's the PRC? <laughs> so, uh, conclusion. Uh, for me, yeah, at least anyway, uh, I think for CPAM, the PRC has been uh, a success. Uh, a lot more people have stayed involved up to the end of the year. Loads more pull requests have been done. <coughs> and lots of proper serious bugs have been fixed. I've been really amazed by some people who had some pretty... Uh, strange, interesting, challenging distributions assigned. And I've spent a serious chunk of time learning about that and learning some other field so that they could then fix one book. Um, we haven't fully capitalised on the potential uh, and on the interest that people wanted to get involved. I think this shows that there are people out there who want to get involved. Some are beginners, some are kind of intermediates. I think there are other things we can do to help them get involved and stay involved. One thing this did really well was show, I think, that to get people in, you've got to have a low barrier to entry um, and to kind of initially draw them in and then we need to kind of pull them in deeper into the, the community. Having some small, well-defined, fun tasks would, help, would have helped that big chunk of people who came in and then were but oh, this is all perhaps a bit harder than I was expecting. So uh, perhaps the, the initial odd ramp was, was quite low, but then some people had quite a steep uh, ramp following that. A lot of people joined to, to learn, and I think that could be separated from the uh, fixing bugs aspect of the challenge. Um, a bunch of people said they want to do it next year, um, so I am going to do the challenge next year. Um, a whole bunch of people said that they were really impressed with how organised I was, which just <laughs> amazed, amazed me and would make my partner laugh her head off. Um, so what it says to me is that winging it with a passion is actually kind of a workable strategy, because I felt like for most of this year, I've been making this up as I go along. But it, actually, that kind of worked out okay. And clearly, a whole bunch of people didn't spot that. So, um, and kind of relevant to the theme of this conference, 120 people in the survey said that they'd be um, interested in a, kind of a sister challenge for Pearl 6. Um, but that would probably have to be more about creating modules than curating an existing base of modules. Okay. What was your question? It was more of a hacker that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well done! I'm glad I avoided the hacker.